And welcome to another episode on Ledger Nation. Today we'll talk about historical NFTs. We will talk about why they are important, why they have a value, and what their characteristics are. So Chris, let's start right away. What are historical NFTs? Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show once again. And actually, like historical NFTs, they show uh, a different aspect from the blockchain and NFT technology that was started for the first time by some of these projects. And they are different in different as aspects and different blockchains as well. So basically, and these are the projects that were first on the market in some area. Yes, exactly. NFT we're going to talk about is the first PFP or profile picture NFT that was ever created. The CryptoPunks. The CryptoPunks! <laughs> and um, everybody has heard or seen them and they are quite, they are pixelated. And uh, what is also relevant for them is that they were the first project to be minted in uh, 10,000 pieces. All of them totally unidentical from one another. But by the way, uh, the only place that you can buy uh, CryptoPunks is on the website of Larva Labs, which is the development studio that created the project. And that I cannot buy a CryptoPunk on OpenSea? Yeah, you cannot. Ah, oh, and that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, and actually I guess there are all, there is also extremely high demand for a crypto punk because they are one of the blue chips right now. So maybe it's very hard also to find a crypto punk to buy. Maybe there is not a lot of um liquidity on the market. Well, yeah, the actually there is because for example, you can see over here these are the punks, uh the NFT, the single NFTs. Uh, this one Look was at these prices. Sold. What's the cheapest yeah, exactly. one? What's the cheapest one right now? Can we see that? Current lowest price. It's 81 uh, yeah. ETH. Uh, so we saw that actually the CryptoPunks are liquid. So there are over a thousand CryptoPunks for sale right now. And there are some recent transactions, although they're so expensive. But of course, they're one of the blue chips. And of course, a lot of people want them. So yeah, I guess uh, there is some traction there. Great. Thanks, Chris. Uh, what's next? Okay, so next um, NFT we're going to present is the first NFT game that went really viral. And this is CryptoKitties. Uh, important to notice over here is that this is, uh, this is the game that made NFT a term. And it's also the first NFT which was issued in the standard ERC721, which made all copies um, of a token totally unique from one another oh completely non-fungible exactly uh here we can have a look at how many kitties are at the moment there are more than two million kitties uh, and this is the how many of them were sold like sixty-nine thousand ethereum worth of crypto kitties were sold and they are inside currently inside about 130 different wallets uh, different thousand different wallets. Many of them are really, really cheap nowadays. Of course, it really depends on the rarity and uh, 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 the generation of the kitties. Next in our list is Sarotobi. This is also a game uh, which was created in 2015. And back then it, it was, as you can see, it's a pixel game. It's very simple. It was actually one of the first mobile games on the App Store. And uh, the game consists of pressing uh, a button and the monkey starts jumping. That's it. But what is interesting here is that the founder of the game, he wanted to uh, start uh, allowing users of the game to buy in-game items with Bitcoin. This is something that Apple did not allow on their platform. And that is why in 2016, he decided to uh, instead of buying in-game items with Bitcoin, he decided the users to be able to mint Bitcoin by playing the game. And so the first play-to-earn game. Exactly. Yeah. 
So on OpenSea here, we see the actual NFTs from, from this game. Um, you can see these cards. And uh, yeah, apparently they're also priced very high. So we have some 495 Ethereum, 440 Ethereum, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is how the actual NFTs from the game look like, this jumping monkey. So next uh, on our list is the My Curio Cards collection, which is the first art on the Ethereum blockchain, art NFT collection on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, which was issued in May of 2017. And what is interesting about this collection is it's also a semi-fungible um, token collection. It consists of 30 cards, uh, but let's go a little bit deep dive into the cards themselves. So the first one is, of course, the Apple card. Why? Well, because it starts with an A. And second, because it's the uh, fruit of Adam and Eve that made them uh, make some awful mistakes in the Bible. <laughs> okay, so basically, this is like a history. Okay, we start with Adam and Eve and with the apple. Exactly. That's why yes. it's the first one. Ah, okay. Exactly. And so then, uh, yeah, so these cards have different type of, uh, different kind of um, supply. But a little bit later, I'm going to talk about supply. Anyways, what I want to emphasize on here is also the, the artists, because uh, as I said, this is the first art collection and there are a couple of artists that have made all different cards. And one of the uh, first artists is called Finip. And Finip has also the number two and three in the collection, which is nuts and berries. And these represent the uh, food or the nurture that one needs and it starts like when you start creating, you need some food, food for thoughts. After that, we go to three cards. Uh, and actually, what is in, what is interesting to mention over here is that this 30 card collection has some um, sub collections. And the first sub collection is cards one, two, and three. Some call them the fruit salad but these are all the fruits in the collection so to say and after that comes the come the next three uh small three collection which is clay paint and ink and these represent the materials that you use to create art and that is why Very logically cool. after it comes uh seven eight and nine which are sculpture which you make from clay painting you make from uh, paint and of course books you write with ink and you know to complete uh, this first huge subset of uh, cards is future so from one to ten this is one of the uh, set the second biggest subset of course the biggest biggest subset uh, of curie cards is if you have all 30 cards but later i'm going to explain that this is very difficult it's only 36 times that can this can exist in the world now the, in the blockchain world well because uh all cards have different supply and cards 26 which we're going to see a bit later uh has active supply of 36 cards I i'll explain a bit later what is active supply um oh, but in so general you mean so you mean the goal is to get one of each of these numbers Exactly. Basically, and then you have so, the whole collection. That is why this is collectible. Whole collection. And you okay. make a collection, yeah? Okay, I get it. So after that, you have uh, 11 BTC, uh, mine, mine Bitcoin, and uh, the another BTC. And these three are more or less, uh, and they are actually not more or less, but they're made by Crypto Graffiti. This is just another artist. Interesting about him is that uh, when he made this collection in 2017, uh, as you can see, it's um, making kind of a joke with different banks and financial institutions. And this was the idea of democratization of uh, finance. And then we came, uh, we come again to Finip. So he's making now uh, irony with some very famous uh, brands in the world, like cryptocurrencies, Coca-Cola, Code It, Code Is It. <laughs> uh, this is Wendy's. Bitcoin, 
and this is uh, Heineken. Yeah, Heineken is Bitcoin again. Yes. And then comes the next part, which is with some dogs involved. Uh, by the way, UASF, this is the user activated soft fork for Bitcoin. And this is the first fork of the Bitcoin blockchain that was attended. And um, it's very funny the, uh, the connection between the painting itself, the dog, and how he's cautious to touch the water. And this is how cautious the people were to activate this soft fork for Bitcoin back then. Uh, and here, this the, the dog part of the collection is actually by uh, CryptoPop. He's another artist. Then to the moon, by the way, the expression to the moon, guess where it was taken from? From the Curio cards. Because this is the first time it was ever uh, presented uh, in part of art related to uh, cryptocurrencies. So another historical moment in this historical collection. Exactly, yes. Uh, and after that is 19, which is again dogs trading, playing poker. So this is another small subset of uh, like the dogs, so to say. Uh, then this is another part of history. This is the first profile picture on the blockchain. And you're asking who is this guy? So this is Thomas Hunt and he is actually one of the founders of the whole project. He's one of the organizers of the project and he has a very famous talk show or uh, video blog which is called Mad Bitcoin and that is why he was depicted also as part of the collection. Then here here comes another small um, collection which is by Robek. By the way Robek is a very interesting artist because he's still very active in the community and in the discord of uh, Curio Cards and he's constantly doing some additional art which is very similar to the copies that you see here like the wizard the bard and the barbarian uh, and he airdrops them to owners of these cards which is very nice of him okay so next uh, subset is by daniel friedman which is also another famous uh, crypto art artist and he has also three cards first one is complexity then passion and education and education nowadays is actually one of the rarest cards because initially it had 111 supply, uh, but then some of the cards were burned and some of them were also in um, dead or zombie wallets that have not been used for more than 1000 days. And that is why some people believe that these copies might have been lost or the, the people lost the private keys or the password to their wallets and they cannot access them anymore. And that is why there are only 33 copies that are active right nowadays from this card. And this makes actually the task to, to have a complete set of Curio cards difficult and limited to 33 copies. Or 33 times you can have all 31 cards. And after that comes the next one, which is uh, Marisol Vengas, is another artist. She also has three cards, which are blue pink and yellow and the final card of the collection is the eclipse and interesting is by thomas mir and uh it's called the eclipse because this card was released on the 21st of august 2017 when the eclipse of the moon occurred and that is why it was called like that yeah, so that's more or less one of the, uh, or my personal favorite collection of NFT cards that exist nowadays. And um, I think it's quite precious because it represents really many first things. So Chris, thanks so much for sharing with us these historical NFT collections. It was very insightful to see a lot of firsts, a first in the NFT world. Thank you for having me, Maria. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.